going. I mean, they heat it up now. Yeah. 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 Love it already start to heat it up. Watch it up, Rice Now we can heat it up even further. Ladies and gentlemen, comrades. The whole world has come to Haggai Hall tonight. B's, B's, N's, S. T's and non T's, they're all here. They're all here. They all gathered here tonight. All right, you know, all right. your service, we would begin this with this. This is Sandy Day, you know. Psalm 37. Fret not thyself because of evil doers. <laughs> Neither be thou envious of the workers of iniquity. Right. For they shall soon be cut down like the grass. Yeah. And wither as the green herb. Trust in the Lord and do good. So shalt thou dwell in the land of verily who shalt be fed. Ladies and gentlemen, the wheels of justice they turn slowly, but they bring thoroughly. They do a leave a grain. And I said to you tonight, we have returned to the scene of the biggest crime that was ever committed against the people of Barbados. We have returned to the scene of the hopes that David Thompson and the people of the Democratic Labour Party put on the people of Barbados. On this very site, when we David Thompson and his people took right the people of Barbados, right took right the majors. Oh, and I said, he stand up, you know, and he, he, he big cross, he had up a big screen. And he said, bring up that chair, bring up that one. I can't see it from where I am. Bring up that one. And he called this, he used this highway as a metaphor. He said it was highway robbery. Thompson stood on this spot. And he said it was highway robbery. And he said that we were feathering our own nest. I get caught up in it too, but I can tell with that later. But little did we know what was going on between him and Clico at the time. Thompson walked to bump Barbados, every nook of cranny, abusing the Barbados Labour Party. Talking about how bad the Barbados Labour Party people were. Yeah. And who was millionaires? And who got checks and who didn't get checks? Little did we know, 3.3 million was being passed through. From Clico, here it went. Clico, Thompson, and Thompson back to the benefit of who? Juan Leroy Paris. I did not make that up. That is in the forensic report. That is in the forensic audit that came from Deloitte. And I said this here You understand what $3.3 million could do in Barbados at this time? A lot. When poor people can't get any money in Barbados, when these people have doubled the unemployment rate. You understand how much $3.3 million, how much children that can send school? Not how many medicines that could buy? Roads to repair. How many roads that can repair? House aid to repair. How many houses that can build? People can be employed. And we stood here uh, and they talked to fool us on this side. But yeah. click on the click on the back of is just but one example. This is symptomatic and symbolic of all that is wrong with the Democratic Labour Party. Now we cannot take five more years with the Democratic Labour Party at all. No. The people of Barbados cannot afford another five years of the Democratic Labour Party. You know the way things are going now, blunder after blunder, misstep after misstep. This is what marks the government of Frontier Stewart. And tonight, ladies and gentlemen, my heart bleeds for my country. This is the worst bunch of people that have ever occupied the corridors of government of this country. My heart bleeds for my country tonight. And I say to you tonight, the Democratic Labour Party has no moral authority to come to your house and beg you for a vote in the next election. These people have not kept one promise that they have made to the people of Barbados in the manifesto that they have made. No. Now I know that they have not believed that the manifesto is a social contract with the people and all that. They know all that day. But the Democratic Labour Party has not kept one of their promises to you. And let me tell you, and then when things get bad, you know the first thing you hear from them out is that they blame the global financial crisis. They blame the global financial crisis. Ladies and gentlemen, the only crisis that we have in Barbados is a crisis of competence in our government. That is the only crisis we have. Every 
our minister before he went off, as you, you will see. It is at these times that we need a government. No. It is at these times and difficult times that a government needs to step up to the plate and back. And I say, the agents have lost all faith in government and the institutions of government in Barbados. If you walk around this place, the despondency, the loss of faith in government is all over Barbados in the faces of people. You see that these people don't believe that we stand the chance. And every single thing in Barbados, ladies and gentlemen, has gone wrong, misstep to misstep. The Democratic Labour Party will get a one cow funeral procession wrong. They will say the Hirsch won't bless and cow somewhere else. The Democratic Labour Party will get a one cow funeral procession wrong. They will frag up that too. And when you see every single thing in Barbados is on the rise and no solutions in sight at all, at all, at all. If you ask the Dems tonight, you like Bill Garner, you water Bill Garner, you gas Bill Garner, you land tax Bill Garner, you road tax Bill Garner, you food bill in the supermarket, everything Garner. And then to make matters worse, they increase the fat on that. So you can imagine that you already have a, a level of inflation that we can't live with and then they increase the fat. And then that compounds everything else that I've spoken about. I say tonight, ladies and gentlemen, medicines for poor people, they got a medicine in a crest store. Expensive. Crest store, man. Expensive. Used to be from the formulary. And that Titan boy, Dominus. Oh, don't talk to she. Don't that talk to That Titan she. boy. Don't talk to her. He took it off. He, he took the her. thing off. But me, you can imagine. Don't These talk people have walked about. Uh, and apart from everything that I've told you, the people of our country who have paid their dues already, we have reduced them now to raising the make sense that they can't even live another couple of years. And I'm saying this, they have reduced Parliament to a circus. A circus. The language is poor. The language is poor, Kenny Best. Oh Lord, Kenny worse. Worse. <laughs> worse than the best. Kenny worse. Kenny worse, man. Right? Not best, man. Worse. Bad, so the things are bad. The arguments are bad, but the language is even worse. And the boy and boy man, is not even, even worthy of any form of elimination anymore. The boy any form of respect. Man, he's you know, they want to keep your children, children away from them. This is the best time. And then they start talking. Probably your children are telling you, listen to that. <laughs> Parental guidance. Violence to your ears. <laughs> Did he be us now? When you heard the Kenny Best, Kenny what? Dennis Kelman, oh, and that woman Sarah Paling. <laughs> Sarah Paling. A minister of labor that can tell you, a minister of labor that can tell you that unemployment among young people gone up. She tell how we plan to fix it. Why plan to do about it? You hear government lamenting the fact that things are bad? But well, this is a monkey government. A oh. poor Reiki government, whatever I call them. Poor Reiki government. And I said this tonight, Barra and Adams and them must be turning over in the graves, man. Oh yeah. And Barra and Tom Adams and Bradley and them must be turning over in their graves. To see, the to see what this thing has come to. Yeah. And I tell you ladies and gentlemen tonight, as Barbadians we expect better. As Barbadians we deserve better than the Democratic Labour Party. So Under this BLB, we will restore Barbados. Right. And we will give you what you deserve. Right. Getting back to the 14 years of prosperity that we had in this country, man, on the Owen Arthur, the Barbados Labour Party. We are going to come, we bring it back to you. And I say this, they look, all this foolishness about, about the being about the water government. Let me tell you this, right? We can do this with dignity. We can do this with dignity and class. We ain't gonna behave like ethic and then. But this is a war term government. I say tonight that any right thinking Barbadian would not give the Democratic Labour Party another opportunity to do even worse. We need Owen Arthur and the Barbados Labour Party back in the house. I am not giving them another chance. I am making an apology tonight. I apologize to Hudson Griffith, the candidate for St. John. I am, I am apologizing, Hudson, 
please bear with me. Hudson is the only body I'm apologizing to because he just came out of a by-election and he lost by about 4,000 votes and that might be difficult to turn around. Remember I told you, rubber dub dub two men in their tub. I am saying tonight after the next election, we might be cross the aisle speaking tomorrow alone. Hassan, forgive me. We can speak tomorrow alone across the aisle. Because all of them gone, all of them gone. This is the site, ladies and gentlemen, as I told you before, yeah. where we were in this struggle. Where the greatest hopes was perfected, um, was pointed on the people of the Barbados. This was the greatest tragedy that we have ever had in elected politics in this country. And the BNP minister suffered, suffered through David Thompson and his lies, and the innuendo, and the salacious gossip, going after a man that has done so much for this country, who has suffered on this side, who has suffered on this side, foolish check. He even gave it to us and he had his shoes. I'm bringing that one on the table. Clay Maskell! Clay Maskell! You took a man as dignified as Clay Maskell, and this man took this hard, what foolishness, and sought to try to destroy a political career that was at his height. Yeah, a man that any, any government, government anywhere in the world would give the right arm to have. And David Thompson sought to destroy that young man with foolishness. Hard work. He would know what hard work was. He had a lot of work. He had a lot of work. And Stuart and them. Stuart never distanced himself from that type of bad behavior. The accusations, the innuendo, the gossip, they reveled in it, they enjoyed every moment of it, and they never for one minute distanced themselves from the Kiko issue. You know, when me and Molly bought the no-confidence motion on March 6, 2009 to the Parliament of Barbados, they just were being warned. Yes, yes. By a responsible opposition. Yes, yes. A responsible yes. opposition is always looking out for you. Yes. For the people and for our community. Yes. And the Dems laughed into scorn. Yes. The Democrats, they were finally laughed into scorn. And there was no bigger person laughing or railing on it than Frondel Stewart himself. Yeah. Frondel Stewart was the Attorney General at the time. Orgers. And the comments on the matter, his comments on the matter, were not only were imprudent at best and reckless at worst. This is, the, this, is, this is the chief legal officer of the cabinet. And this only goes to this only goes to Parliament. But you know this is Stuart in every respect. You know that? Stuart is a lazy man that do all the work. Friend does go to work and help the people. He is known in the legal profession as a procrastinator. The procrastinator in chief. They said they're going to the office, he got files all around the desk. When out they encourage us to do our files every day. When did this every day? Sure, I've got as much files as you go off, you can't see, Stuart. <laughs> then you go through the door, I understand you can't see, Stuart. Because Stuart does not do any work. Stuart is lazy. I need to come and do some work on behalf of the people. But Clinkwa is reminiscent of every action of Frandell Stuart in every way. That is what you see. The eager 11, 11 of them do a war, Stuart. And then listen, and people, you remember Stuart, listen, Stuart got some statements. He said people should be paying with their necks. When the eager 11, nothing has happened. He said he was going to deal with the Alexander School and their home issue with dispatch. He was going to fix it with dispatch. We are into now stage one, stage two ain't come yet. This is a month gone. And the people cannot know what is the resolution down there, Alexander School. The time he know, I see Alex McDonald there, they're sending him over the lime and pass going out to Stuart. Well, if we got to wait for Stuart to solve anything in Barbados, the lime is shut down in Barbados. Cornell Stuart cannot solve anything. In the Greek or no confidence debate, he called the debate frivolous and vexatious. He said it lacked capacity to do damage and should be punished with laughter. That's what Frandell dealt with it. He said Beijing would have preferred to watch cricket on television. 
rather than listening to Mrs. Mortley's call and her position. And he compared Mrs. Mortley's motion to Horace's ask square ticket. You know, he made a he normal like, thing that anybody else, you know. Like, he says the prophecy that Moctis would be in labor and would give birth to mice. There's a friend that definitely, you know. And then, listen to the prophet. Listen to the prophet. He says, I have heard nothing to shape my knowledge or understanding of Greek or I have heard no such thing and therefore I want to signal to this house and to the country immediately that this motion does not qualify for my personal support. That is how Fandel Stewart dealt with the Clico matter. This is our Attorney General, the man that is no war Prime Minister. He said I will be voting against it. My faith in the Minister of Finance remains intact. And all this time his cronies around here were beating the death. Beating the death and beating the chest. And I say that they should all stand condemned here tonight over the Clico issue. I am not bringing any one of them. Are you going for all of them? He said, this is our AG, you know, this is our Attorney General at the time. He's now being Prime Minister. I go be done the world listen to me in that house down the road there. He don't see me there. He just won't get you out in there. He don't see me there. He had not heard anyone in Barbados complain since January the 31st, 2009. Liar. To get a claim settled and leaving dissatisfied. He said, not one. Not Liar. one complaint. I know, listen to you. He said, those things happen with Nasham and Great Northern. In fact, on my desk are still claims to be settled in relation to Great Northern. And this short attack the statutory fund legislation. He said, he reasoned that if the rationale for its existence of such a fund was to protect depositors and policyholders, one would have thought that the legislation would contain major penalties for no for no compliance. But the penalty was a mere $2,500 fine by a magistrate. And then listen to the joker. He says, that is the legislation that was passed by the Barbados Civil Party in 1996. You hear in here today how critical the fund is, but there is no real distinction between a company representing 40,000 policyholders failing to comply with the statutory fund and a vagrant in Bridgetown being caught with a spliff. That is how, that is how the Dems then laugh, all of them laugh into to, to, to serious laughter in Parliament. And then they laughed at all of the policy holders faces and the pension holders faces in Barbados. I said tonight, ladies and gentlemen, the Democratic Labour Party had an opportunity to join with us and deal with this issue where this issue was prominent and had come up in Trinidad. And they laughed at you. They laughed at you who had put your hard-earned money into Clinko. They should all stand condemned tonight. Oh. And this wicked insensitive bunch should be put out of parliament unceremoniously. Yeah. I said, and then Stuart closed, this is how he closed, he said, yeah. he stated that he didn't expect the motion to become a point scoring exercise or an opportunity to disclose personal affairs. The leader of the opposition speech is nothing more than salacious rubbish. Stuart called Miss Mortley's contribution salacious rubbish. Tonight, we told you so. And then he says, what a thing, what a thing. This man called this morning speech rubbish. And I said, AG, no PM Stewart. He never said that he would seek to amend the legislation. He never said that he would seek to create a better opportunity for the future of a further protection of policyholders. He laughed it out of court as it's his reckless, insensitive style. Stewart is no good for Barbados. Check his record. Stuart, do some work man, for the people of Barbados. Can't do it. Chris don't want him. Dorme don't want him. Silly 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 want him. He told me to let you have a national duty to perform to get rid of this idiot from around us. Make the words of Harley Henry. And if none of them know what it, why should you? Every demon I, his cabinet, and next to him, 
Do I want to waste you? I said, send him and his group packing whenever he calls the election. He said, are you calling the general election? Now we will not pressure him to call the election if I really have a party. I say, ladies and gentlemen, you know what I'm saying? He called the last one. I am telling you tonight, the people of Barbados, you need to pressure him to call the election, man. Tell Stuart, the people of Barbados, not the Barbados of Barbados, the people of Barbados are fed up. We had enough of this. Stuart, call the election, man. Call it, man. If you so big and bold, you call the election. I say, Thompson said he called the last one. And he lied to all of you. And nowhere it was felt more than in this spot here at Hockey Hall. This is where we got beaten, you know. I, I still love the view. We get beaten here. And I say this here character assassinations, disrespect for good people. You know, I suffered personally during this whole David Thompson debacle, you know. You know, David Ellis get on the radio and try to make out the eye the blinking sound like here, but I ain't done yet. David Ellis got on the radio and tried to paint me as some millionaire. And I, I, I was an instant millionaire, but I get some money for that, right? But I'm saying this here, and all I ever did was do what bitches do. I bought a house. Me and my wife. Then I chose up. We bought a house. We do what every Barbadian wants to do. Absolutely. Huh? Get and let me tell you this, I don't own a plantation. I never did and I never will. I bought a house. Two people who work for good salaries in Barbados went to Scotia Bank and got a mortgage. And I tell you tonight, no. I asked Stephen Smith at Scotia Bank to reveal anyone where they could go. My mortgage number at Scotia Bank is zero, zero. <laughs> Four zero zero eight eight three seven eight. I can repeat it, you know. This blasted foolishness has got to stop. This dark foolishness has got to stop. Zero zero four zero zero eight eight three seven eight. Stephen Smith, call and ask for him. Ask Scotia Bank in Broad Street. That is where my mortgage is. And when I left office. Like anybody else, when your salary get cut in half, I struggle to pay mine too. And the plan to put me in a lawyer hand, I went to a chambers called Trinity Chambers. I said I want to foreclose for my house. I, I, listen, I am willing to withstand the scrutiny of any audit, forensic or otherwise. And I said it tonight. You know that thing did a lot of damage to my wife and my family, you know. But I said tonight here. I feel that every single candidate should declare the assets before they go into the general election. Right. I tell Stuart tonight from this platform, pass the law. Right. I am willing to declare my assets, right. all of my assets, before we go into the next general election. I feel every candidate should be made to do it. We need to know where you got no, right. and where you got where you come out. Right. And I say, I say, let us not go through another election with what happened being repeated. We deserve better. The people of Barbados and the people of the Barbados so far deserve better. Don't let any leader again like David Thompson, what he did, come here and fool you about what people got or what people alleged to have. Let me know now. Let me know, friend, you know what he really has and what he really did. Stuart passed the legislation, man, and let all the candidates declare their assets before we run. Make sure, sure, yeah, as well uh, as you promised. Yeah, and the depositors and click on get back their money. You say that you will do anything to make them sure that they get it back. And the Barbados Civil Party will join with you in anything that is legitimate and sensible to get back their money. I say to that, ladies and gentlemen, don't let you go down that road again. I say, fret not thyself because of evil doers, because they will be cut down like the grass. Ladies and gentlemen, stay with Oinasa and the BLP. Let us restore Barbados to what it was. And stop making us the laughing stock of the Caribbean. Put back Oinasa and the Barbados of a party in office. And let us once again live for prosperity for you, your children and your grandchildren. I don't